Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason with Drive to Win 13. In a previous video, I talked about all of the things that you want to do as you're starting out in your Turo adventure. And I stopped that video right at the point at which we are right now, which is doing that first trip. Okay. I'm going to go through the check in process exactly what I do every single trip to ensure that that trip is smooth, guests are happy, and I make a lot of money right now and in the future with that guest and all of their friends. There's some very specific things that I do to ensure that, and I'm gonna pass that along to you because you may be new, maybe you've been doing this a little bit and you're getting low ratings for some reason, I'm gonna to try to help you with that. Now, also keep in mind, a lot of uh, areas are different, places are different, airports are different, there's different rules. Turo will send you information for the rules for your airport. So one uh, for whatever airport you're checking into, okay? So if you are in a major city, you, you just read through those rules, it'll kind of tell you exactly what to do and what you can't do. So your area might be a little different than mine, but the check-in process is all going to be the same. First of all, within about 24 hours, your trip or your, uh, your current trip that you're checking in becomes available for check-in. Now, currently, you do have to select the section that um, talks about wiping down. That all has to do with um, cleanliness of the car. You have to check mark each spot, and then you have to acknowledge that that has been complete. Next, you're going to hit check in uh, the trip. The very first thing it's going to pop up with is it's going to ask you about all the pictures. Now, pictures are extremely important because this is your evidence as to how you drop the car off versus how the customer picked it up. The customer, I always recommend that the customer also takes pictures. That way, that's their evidence and how they picked it up. If there's some discrepancy in between the two, then something happened to your car between the time you dropped it off and the time they picked it up, and neither of you are really liable, okay? However, I would say 90% of my customers don't ever put any pictures in there. So it's extremely important that my pictures are good. I will try to add at least 20 pictures. Sometimes I'll add more, um, but usually about 20 pictures. There's a few things when taking pictures. Do a lot of different angles of the same area, especially high uh, areas that may get damaged, like bumpers, uh, wheels, um, and, and like the back and the front. Take different angles of it just in case there's some glare or something that uh, that Turo cannot decipher whether or not that damage was there. So if you have some funny reflections and stuff, just move around a little bit, take multiple pictures so that it is pretty clear. Now, also in taking pictures, I also take pictures, detailed pictures of current damage that's on the car. I will make sure like on my 300S, somebody did some curb rash that I did not get fixed. And so I always, when I take picture of that rim, I always take a close up of that area. The reason why is so that the customer and Turo both are pretty clear that, hey, I'm not trying to pull one over on anybody. I'm documenting damage that I already have. I'll also do that with any window chips. If I have a very small window chip, I'll go ahead and notate it in there. Not verbally, but I will put a picture of that in there. Same with any type of current scratches, major issues, anything that is uh, big scuffs or stuff, I'll go ahead and notate that in there as well. For the most part, I keep my cars pretty darn clean, so I don't really uh, take too many interior pictures, but I will uh, take a picture with each door open, usually the dashboard, and then the most important picture that you're going to have is the odometer showing the mileage and the full tank of gas. Once you have completed all of the pictures and you have verified their ID, you will then hit checked in. That vehicle needs to stay in that spot. So you want to make sure that all your pictures are done at the airport or just prior to the airport. But the, um, the picture of the dashboard needs to be when it is parked because the mileage needs to be the same. Because you're going to put in there how many miles are on the car. That picture needs to be the exact same number. You're going to put in there that the gas was full and that picture needs to indicate the gas was full. Next, you're going to have to make sure, this is what I do, you can do it differently, but this is something that I do to make my customers, my guests, feel very knowledgeable about where the car is. 
I will step back and I'll take a picture of the spot that it's parked in relation to where they maybe are coming out. I'll try to get them as close to baggage claim as possible. Then I will tell them the row of the, the parking, the spot number, and I'll take a picture of both of those things and the car parked in that spot. I will then relay that information and some quick directions of how to get there. Some airports are different. Some you have to take elevators up to the whatever level and over a tram and all these things. You just have to be very clear about that. If they are new, they might not understand this process and they may be very curious about it. And, uh, and concerned, you might offer, if they're brand new, to go ahead and wait around at the airport if you have the ability to and direct them directly to the car. I will also take this opportunity to explain where the key is located, anything like toll transponders that are on the car, and any rules that I have, one of them being no smoking. I also have these stickers that I put in the car. It's pretty clear, no smoking, no vaping in my car. I don't go through and say, hey, you'll be charged and you're going to get a cleaning fee and all this. I just say, just as a reminder, due to past issues, I want to make sure you understand there is no smoking. Last but not least, once they've checked in, keep an eye on your phone around the time that they are arriving. They may have some questions. If they are asking questions and they're standing out in a parking lot trying to figure out how to get in your car because they can't find the key or they don't know where it's at or anything, you want to just be available for them. They may call you. They may text you. I always try to keep it through the Turo app, but they may also text your phone. They may ask you some very simple questions and you can just get them on their way. Again, first impression is super important. So answer their question and, and let them be on the way. Sometimes you can just check your Bouncy app and see if, hey, yep, they got it. They're on their way. They may never communicate with you out through the whole trip. Think about this. How often do you get a text message or a phone call from a major car uh, rental service when you're renting a car? The answer is never. You never get a call from them asking how their trip is. So I do the same. I do not communicate with them unless they communicate with me. I will answer any questions that they have. So keep that in mind. I don't follow up. The only time I will follow up is about the day before they're to return the car. I will just simple text them and say, hey, super simple, park it anywhere and let me know where it's at. Okay, last but not least, be super friendly with your uh, guests. And when it comes down to the end of the trip, they have just finished their trip and they're, they're off on their airplane. When you check it in, go ahead and give them their rating right then. More than likely, they have not rated you yet. So here's a little trick that I've been doing and it has worked flawlessly. I get five stars on every single one of them as I do this, as I say, hey, thank you for taking such good care because when you, when you get in uh, to do your rating, you can actually uh, do a pl public rating, which is five stars and a public comment about the customer. And then you have a private message. In the private message, I say, hey, thank you for taking such good care of my car. Thank you for keeping it clean. I really appreciate that. You just earned yourself your first five-star rating, or you just earned yourself a five-star rating. What that tells them, as they get that message, is, oh, I got to give this guy a rating too. He was super happy with me. I was super happy with him, so I'm going to go ahead and give him the same.